Welcome to Thorns and Thoughts. Unfortunately, I don't have any content. Uh, the man already speaks his mind, but I ain't gonna stop you now. You already, you, I, mean, I assume you saw a pretty fucking good video. Alright? And you're already on the man's channel. So stay a little while longer. I see you're comfortable. And just check a few more out. Right, I have a quick question about the split with LS, but obviously this isn't going to be like a 45 minute segment where we go. So all I'll say is this, I'll just phrase it very, very carefully. Basically, some of the things I heard were essentially, let's just say like LS and Jack had different ideas about like things a coach would yeah. do, wouldn't do, what the environment would be. I'd, I'd even say things about how much like control the coach has, how much he should do certain things a certain way. And I don't even think, by the way, from hearing both people's sides all the way through, I don't think anyone was right or wrong. I think it's one of those ones where it's actually like, they, they had like a bad marriage, basically, and it had to break up one way or another. And also, there's another thing I'll say as well, which is it sounds to me like maybe it's like he also the reason he made that decision was also based on what other people wanted. And then later you just decide, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done it for that reasons, or maybe I wasn't totally all in on it myself. So I think in the end, whatever, yeah. both people seem fine with it. No one's got drama. But I have to ask about that split in general, which is like, one, just what would you say on the LS thing? And then two, the other thing is, how the fuck did it go from like, people forget this. It wasn't just Berserker. Berserker and Summit were absolutely smurfing the whole fucking LCS. And then obviously after that, you got that ridiculous scenario where Summit just like, I've never seen a player drop off that hard, mate. And then he, the joke was he actually did like speed run to the airport and then just fuck off out the region. Like what? Give me some thoughts on this split. This is another insane split. Okay, so let's start with LS. So... I actually respect Ellis a lot because of his, he has a lot of takes and different ideas than most people. Like his coaching and his vision of the game is very different than any other Western coach I ever worked with. Besides Max Waldo, who's basically like, you know, half Ellis. His protege, yeah. Yeah, sure. And then I realized that Ellis as a coach would probably only be a good coach if he had a team of five players that wanted to play the way he wanted Right. Berserker and Summit are not those people. Korean players are traditionally the most stubborn when it comes to change. They don't want to play Majors Ball in. They don't want to play funny champs in any roles. You know, like, you never see Korean ACs playing things, but champs that right click people. That's how it is. So when Manelis told Berserker to play Chogaf or a Cartus or anything else like that, he was just like, oh, why am I playing those champs? You know, like, he makes jokes about it sometimes now. But like he really doesn't want to play those champs. He just doesn't. It's not not in him. And he has to take Summit, who was playing his main champions, Nar, Renekton, champs LS hates with a passion at the time, especially during his don't tier, like don't play those champs tier. When you make that kind of guy play a Philios top, or like Draven Flex pick, or whatever the fuck he was playing, I wasn't always there. It just didn't make sense. Simon was always questioning, why am I playing this shit? What the fuck is going on? Can I just play Mechton? Can I just play Nar? You know, it just didn't... It didn't work. I think LS would be a great coach in a team where all five players respect his opinions. I'm not saying that Sion didn't, but... Where they all really wanted to play like he did. Butch had a lot of that, for example, where he was always, like, yeah. following LS's ideas and giving him a lot of room to try stuff like the Soraka mid, the Iron mid, the Gwen Iron mid jungle combo. Like I think that's things that no one would ever try without him. So I can appreciate I also find the wall, right? Watching these things happen. But also, you know, he just felt like he the team and him weren't meant for each other in that sense. It didn't feel like he was fully allowed to do what he wanted. Um so it didn't work out. There's obviously more to it behind the scenes. Oh of course, but yeah. That's not that's not my place to talk no, about. No, no. I, I mean, I've, here's the thing. I've hinted I some was. of it. Like, for example, I've told people it wasn't just like only Jack. Like, some of the yeah. players also weren't vibing with it. So there's, and that's how I say it had to end. It couldn't have continued if you know the story. It couldn't. Yeah. And then I was the final wall. I was screaming against the LCS team once a week um, with Academy just to stay in shape and give them good practice. It was a weird year for me because I wasn't allowed to play Academy because of the import rule and they had Malice in the jungle. We thought it was going to be too important in the academy at first, but then it didn't become that. So I couldn't play academy because journalists, we don't have one jungler, right? So King was playing academy, and I was just a scrim once a week kind of guy. Uh, it was weird. But about this, with some I mean, summit thing about the end of this the spring split, 
Summit, at some point, outside said to me that he felt like bot lane was a bad investment. That's just his words in English. And I asked him, what do you mean? He means that if you give bot lane gold, they won't give anything back. Okay, they won't carry. And I agreed. Watching C9's bot lane, Winston and Berserker and Springsfoot, they couldn't play the game against TL. They couldn't play the game against EG. And they couldn't play against the Hard Thieves. Like, they actually just couldn't play the game. Like, they physically couldn't farm minions in lane 2v2 for 10 minutes before the game would end. They were just terrible. So in playoffs, Summit had this mindset that he had to carry every game or they would lose. So he put a lot of pressure on himself that if I don't carry, we will lose. So then the outcome becomes the enemy team target bans his best champion, Jason Nar. Now he's still trying too hard to do that, and then he just can't. And now he looks like a fucking donkey trying to carry, right? That's what happened to him. In some ways, I can emphasize... Well, I, feel like I can empathize. Yeah. Em- empathize, yeah, sorry. <laughs> With his mindset of, if I don't carry, no one will. I've been there in some teams in the past. Like, in, for example, in Origin 2016, I felt like if I don't carry, no one will. And it makes you play worse to have the mindset. And then you look worse as a result of it. And that's a really bad place to be as a, play- as a pro player. So, in some ways, I feel like he was a waste of potential. But at the same time, he was also a bit hard to work with in scrims. He would die a lot to ganks. He would die a lot to everything because of the mindset he had that no one else would carry. Instead of working with other people to improve. So it just wasn't meant to be. You know, yeah. uh, It just wasn't meant to be. Uh, Fudge had to play mid as well in a split. And Fudge's play style was pretty vegan, I will say. Like he was scaling for the game with Koroki, Victor, and uh, and shit like that, right? While Summit wanted to play like full LPL gameplay where mid pushes and runs top and dives and support runs top and dives, but Winsome was never leaving his lane that, that year. He was really, really bad. He played much better in uh, spring 2023, I think, in, in FlyQuest than he did in C9. So he definitely improved, but Summit was getting ganked by like Koji J, and he was having. <laughs> breakdowns like oh fucking Koji J's top again like in, in game and I was like what the fuck is going on man so it was it's not meant to be it didn't make sense that team at all um it was put together I don't know who made that team but it didn't make any sense like Summit Berserker two very traditional Korean players playing their traditional champs with LS who was a very innovative or like different coach than most it didn't make any sense so I feel like it's sad that LS probably won't coach again. I mean, who knows, right? But I would like to see him in a team where all the players are like his disciples or like people actually care or like sure. listen to him a lot and, and really, really like try it out to the end, to the end, right? The players always want to play more standard, but they because they felt felt like they they could win by playing standard. So I don't know, weird split for sure. Sure. And then in summer, uh. Here's the question, right? Obviously, I want to ask about the role swap, but here's how I'm going to ask it. Everyone else just did that thing of, because remember, they all think you're still just fucking game five TSM Sven who can't play ADC. Well, you just had all these years where you're really fucking good at ADC. So the question (laughs) I have is this. Dude, I'm almost certain there were other LCS teams that would have taken Sven as it's starting ADC or signed you and you could have been on, you know, the fourth or fifth best team and had a nice salary and earned your career. But why role swap? Like, why why go and sort of risk that and go to a a non-traditional role for you so going into the off season between spring and summer of 2022 my green card is getting finished so i'm currently in norway doing that because denmark was flooded with uh refugees from the ukraine all oh, right uh, okay. Okay. war so everything in denmark is full so i'm in norway now doing it which is fucking weird um and i'm thinking about what i want to do for summer and i asked teams eg at fbi Wait, wait, wait. No, EG has Danny. Yes, that's who right. Who did not carry no matter what. And FBI is not Hunter Thieves, who is their part of their, like their, their core with yeah. the FBI who he thing. And Teal has Han Sama, who everyone thought was the best player uh, before the year started. So there's no hope for joining the top three teams. And Cena has a circuit. They're not going to change. They made that clear. So now I'm like, those are the four best teams in NA. The four teams that will go to Worlds are one, what those three, three of those four teams. So do I join a team like CLG? 
don't know if I could have, but do I join a team like CLG or like Golden Guardians or some shit and pray I can make that team better by myself? Or do I, do I play support in C9 and tackle the difficulties of learning a new role, but I'll have a good team with players that I know? So even if I didn't play in spring, I still know how Berserker is as a person. I worked with Koreans in the past in G2, so I know how they learn English. I know, I know the struggles he goes through, and I know his role the most of anyone on the team. Sure. So I felt like with a lot more factors than that alone, that C9 was the best team I could play in. The role, I thought, fuck it, it can't be that hard, right? That's what I thought. <laughs> I know what the ADC wants, so I had to like reverse and near my head. If I was playing ADC right now, what would I want my support to do in this game, in this moment? It took a long time before I, I really got it and understood the role, but I thought at the time that my best chance of winning Summer and going to Worlds was to play support. And I figured, it's one split, absolute worst case, I play one split support, we win LCS, go to Worlds, if we lose tier 6, so be it. I'll go back to play LCS next split. No one has ever lost their career of one split off or one split as support or something like this, right? You know, Perks came back to mid lane afterwards. No problem, right? That's what I thought about when I did it. I thought, worst case, it's just one split, go to Worlds, and then play AC in 2022, I mean, 2023. So that's what I did. Because I thought I couldn't win in a different team. I thought I couldn't carry, you know, a non C9 TL Hunter Thieves EG team that hard that we could actually win. And it would make me look worse as a player to play in one of those teams and not win. So, yeah, that's it. And then after that, you know, it's a whole different story. One thing that I found kind of funny, though, is, I mean, look, you've got your own style, like your own way of sort of trash talking and like a sort of self-deprecating humor. But I noticed when you swapped to support, I don't know if it was like to assert dominance over the other supports, but you did that ADC thing where you just kept saying sort of like, you made it sound like it was season three and people playing Janna still. You were like, oh, it's just fucking easy spot. You just do a bunch of nothing and then you get carried and you win the game and like, just don't be an idiot, basically. Like, you made, there's, I don't know if the, the, all the other supports would go bad if they heard that because it's so much like nuance yeah. and the timings. But you did a good job making it sound like it's just piss easy to come in and, and play the role right i don't think i got in people's heads by saying this role is so fucking easy and support is so easy and i made this like joke hashtag support king and i was doing the the wolf sign you know the <laughs> okay. signature and sign and people told me like at the after the spring final in the summer finals that i got in their heads during the, the scrims when i would like let's say i would get a double kill playing fucking karma i would type uh, support King all chat with the hashtag and everything, and it would piss people off so bad that every time I died, they would type it back to me in all chat. You know, I was I was doing banter and I was having fun doing it, so I enjoyed myself a lot playing the role. But yeah, I mean, I learned a lot about the the game, the support role, A to C in general. Like playing the support role gives a lot, lot of perspective on the game that I think could help me as an A to C player if I were to choose to play A to C in twenty 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 three. So. I thought it was a, it's a good idea for me to play board first, but let's see what happens. So you already referenced it earlier. Obviously, after this, Jensen came back and he'd actually had a split off himself. If people yeah. don't remember, he just had no one to be on because obviously Team Liquid sort of changed their mind and went with yeah. Bjergsen and he, didn't, and he was going to maybe roll us what but it didn't happen. Right, when he no, came seriously. into this team, the ridiculous thing is, because he had been off, like that team looked mad sketch at the beginning. It was like, it was just okay. But because of the playoffs, I always say what changed at NA is the playoffs are so long. They're like an extra season themselves. Like the meta could change, the patch could change. By the time he was in the playoffs, it was like, bro, this is just Jensen. Like he plays Oriana and LeBlanc and the Odyssey game if he has to. Now he even did the fucking Zillion off Bjergsen. Like, he actually eventually, by the end, wasn't he just Jensen again? Yeah, I mean, we came in late summer because um, I had a passport issue with Berserker as well. So they were playing with King and Destiny, I believe, in week one, and they went 0-3. So we had a rough start to summer. Um, what happened? Let me think about it. Yeah, it was weird just had a split off despite being the best mid in LCS or second best with Bjergsen, who yeah. had a year as a coach. So it was very strange that how that happened. Um, but yeah, we it took a while for us to really figure out what to play. I had to learn a lot of champs before I could even start talking talk about the actual game. So I couldn't really get better as a... How do you say it? Like a, a, a macro player. I could only focus on my own my own game for the first big part of summer, like learning the champions, learning how to play Nautilus, Leona, and Yumi, and whatever the fuck champs, right? <clears throat> so it was 
it took a while before it, it clicked for me how to play and what to play. I think looking back at it, I'm similar to Perks in that the meta in summer 2022 was the best time for me to play a new role, right. support role. Right? Like the the meta was, and not in the start, but towards the end, it was Yumi, Lulu, uh, Nami, uh, Renata, those kind of champions, all ranged champs. I'm sure I had to learn new champs like Renata and. There is more skill expression in Enchanters than people think. And if people play them at a high level, they would understand. But of all the metas I could have chosen, that was the best one. If I had to play Rakan and Alistar, you know, Vulcan would be making fun of me every game. Right. So sure. I, I did choose the best time and yes. I got lucky in the same way that Perks did. But I don't think I got, yes. got carried. I think I played well in summer and we were the best bot lane by far. And, you know, some people will say, yeah, I sort of carried you. Sure, he did carry me, but Berserker was not even the top three best ball lane in spring with Winsome, who was a support main. Like, people will give him credit, and that's fair. I think he's very, very talented, and he's even better now than he was then. But, like, the, people shouldn't act like Berserker could carry anyone because he didn't carry in spring. Sure, he didn't have Jensen, he had Fudge mid lane and summon top, and it was a disaster, but, like, C9 ball lane was generally bad in spring 2022. They were getting clapped really hard in scrims, and it wasn't pretty. So I don't think I, I got carried that hard. Also, the amount of improvement Berserker made because of me shouldn't be understated. You don't see it, but we went through a lot of things. You know, like I've kind of felt like I was like Mithy to him, but I understand his role much better than Mithy understood my role back then. So like I can really help him a lot, and I do help him a lot. On top of that, I'm also probably the best person in the team at understanding Korean English, so to speak. Okay. Like they all sure. le- they all learn Korean English the same way. Like they use the same yes. wrong grammar that But you know like, what they mean if you've heard it enough, right? Yeah. Expect and trick use the same wrong words. Yes. Like do you know my mean? Or instead of saying in twenty minutes, they say after twenty minutes. It's yes. small things like, like like that, right? That they say and they all learn the same way. But I understand it perfectly. So I can easily communicate with him and like translate English to Dude, Berserker that's English. even an underrated thing people don't know. Yeah, it's it, just it, like it, when you it, talk it to it a baby, is, yeah. you talk in their language. You don't actually speak in English and they understand you. You talk yes, yes, what they yes. understand, right? Exactly. And that's why I think I do more for him than people think. Right. And I'm fine not getting the credit that I think sometimes I deserve. But just remember, like, C9's worst split since 2020 was the one without me. Sure, Fudge mid. Blame Fudge mid or blame Summit top or blame Winsome or something like that, right? It's just, a, it's just a fact, right? And I won four splits now with C9 in how many splits is that? Is six I've played? I think so. 20, 20, 21, one split in, yeah, six splits. That's not bad. Yes. And you can get carried sometimes. Sure, it happens to everyone. But you don't get carried this much, in my opinion. Considering that most of the people on this team had us play without me, and they didn't win. Sure. Right? There's so many things you can say about it, but I think I played good in summer. This year in spring, I'll agree, I wasn't the best supporter at all times, but I think I do more for my team than people think. And now I'm okay with that, because I don't need validation from randoms online. I moved past that a long time ago. I used to care a lot, and I used to like browse Reddit in G2, like just openly on my monitor, just like looking like at the comments of the games, be like, like feeding off of it, you know, in a way. But now I don't care anymore. I have my Twitter DMs off. I don't have in. If I go to Twitter right now and open my notifications, I won't see things from people that I follow. For example, I'm. I learned that I don't care, or that social media affects me negatively. So I just block it out these days. Yeah, that's it. I guess. Uh, like what about this then? The Let's thing. do let's do the equivalent for supports of like the ADC complaint, right? It go, it's like you said there. I'll give people the best example, right? What even though slightly will burn a few people with the, what, what they think of players, even though Carrier is fucking unbelievable. And if you know what support he is doing, godlike uh, shit. Spoiler: one of the reasons why he's getting all the credit is because you also know the narrative that he's supposed to be the best player, and everyone's watching what he's doing. You don't. No one's watching the fucking other supports. Like when people caught that Mikhail's dude, I couldn't believe they caught on broadcast. Do you know I've played support a lot? But it's the only role I play. 
I know how many fucking games I've seen where it's like you say, I see an enchanter, and it's like, holy fuck, this guy's a god. Like, he did this spell here, he agree. blocked, he fucking flashed, he even took like a shot from the other guy to die, so his ADC could still cut it out. Like, but they're just watching like the ADC, and it's like it's like you're saying from season five when you were the ADC. Everyone's just watching you, like he's got him in the backpack. He's a fucking genius. But if you see essentially, if you were an enchanter support, I'll say it like this. They think you're doing nothing and you just press a W on someone. It's actually like at the end of a team fight, you lose. You always think I could have been the difference maker if I'd have done like yeah. this slightly different if I had just yes. caught him once if I had got the McHales off you all even though it, look it's not true obviously it's still the carries carry but you do feel like you could have had insane impact right but no one sees it you, yeah. if you do your job basically you're invisible right <laughs> yeah it's easy for support to just get carried and look like it isn't your fault <laughs> but you really have a lot more agency than people think and carrier is really really fucking good I will say like playing as him in scrims this MSI was the best practice I've ever gotten showing me how much supports can actually do, even on champs that you don't think are very impactful. Lulu, for example, is one of them. So I will say like he has a lot more spotlight on him and people will think he has like the the effect where like the faker effect, I guess you can call it, where like a very whatever play is suddenly like, whoa, yes. insane. You know? Yes. Whereas, you know, if he makes a mistake, it's like, oh, such an uncharacteristically mistake from him right there at the, <laughs> yes. the LCK caster um, thing, right? Yeah. Um, I will say he is the best player of all supports. Even if he didn't win MSI, he lost to, to BLG and didn't make the finals against JDG. But he is really, really fucking good. And I won't play for a year now, not even. You know, a year ago, I was sitting in Norway fixing my fucking passport visa situation so i know people aren't like happy with my, my gameplay but i'm still learning the world and i can only like dream to be as good as him so i think if i had more than a year to play this role i would be i can be that good too i sometimes have moments like this in scrims where i see angles that i think other people don't see but i have so much more to learn before i can get there like for example at msi i played against blg game three I'm playing Thresh suddenly against Alistar. I'm like, I haven't played this matchup before in my life because Alistar hasn't been played in oh, Summer last school, year right? yeah. or in year. So I made a mistake in lane where I played the wrong way because I wasn't sure. And I'm like, I just can't not make that mistake because I've never been there before in my life. While well, Kyrie has probably been there 300 million times, right? It's just how it is that you have to go through a certain amount of um, reps, I suppose, as a support player before you really get it. This role is very complex in, in pro play. You have the most decisions to make to get with the jungler role. So you need time and experience to play this role. And that's why I just hope that the fans give me more time because I think that I'm starting to finally get it now after this MSI tournament. Even though it was a disaster and I played really bad in our last game against GNG, I still feel like I'm getting it. You don't see all our scrims and how much progress we're making as a team. So I feel like I'm, I'm getting there now as a support player. I'm starting to to see it, understand it, and feel like I can be actually good at the the role, not just at the game. Because right now I'm getting carried by being good at the game, but my support role the gameplay itself isn't actually that amazing. I just know the game better than most people. That's why I'm better than other players. I here's what I would say about like the all career because as you mentioned it's not just even mate that you're like people are like you know he won LCS and LEC no 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 let me just correct you he won three LECs and he won fucking four LCS and some of them were in a different fucking role like that's not he just did uh, he just did no like you, you won a lot right and the joke is after this interview is he complained about all the seasons that went badly and the times he didn't go deep at Worlds like you actually have had a ridiculous career here's one thing I would say yeah. to you is this it's what I actually said years back ago when I was when people thought I was having a beef with Hauntzer because my favourite player, Flame, was in the LCS and I thought he was just a better player, but Hauntzer had like Bjergsen and double lift. So when people thought, because I was saying he wasn't the best, I was hating on him. I just told Hauntzer once in a DM, you do know, as long as you win the championship and lift the trophy, it doesn't really fucking matter what I say, mate. Like, why would you give a shit at that point in time? If you get to lift the trophy, I lose. Like, yeah. In a sense, yeah. hasn't that been how your career's been? Like, if you have all those, mate, you have seven trophies, you've been on, but like, yeah. you've been like, half a dozen times to all the international competitions. Who gives a fuck what anyone says now, right? Yeah, I mean, it's true. Like, I opened Instagram after we won summer, no, spring for this year, and a friend of mine from home commented on my picture. Then I see there's like a red light on top in messages. I check it, and there's a lot of requests. So I open it, 
since the first time since like 20 fucking 18 the disaster and i see like so many negative comments still there from like years ago right and i remember why do i give a fuck about all these people you know it doesn't matter i won someone says like oh you didn't deserve it like i can open my phone right now and check and i'm sure i'll find some people saying like you didn't deserve it it's undeserved you're trash like it doesn't matter i won you didn't they mad right i don't i moved on from all that kind of stuff a long time ago like i said earlier like i don't give a shit about anyone's opinions even to this day there's a lot of people on twitter like twitter analysts that comment about the game their whole fucking job is to make comments about the games and they have so many bad takes it's unreal and i follow them because of you know whatever reason and i just can't imagine like it's so weird that these people have followings while having such bad takes and they have absolutely no idea what happened during your whole boot camp and every scrim game you've been in and they're tweeting things like this team lost draft but you have no idea about draft first of all and you don't know all the things we went through to get this point in draft oh they gave chovi ari yeah but if we don't give chovi ari then we give the other guy this this draft and this champ and that's much worse for us as a team because we can't play this champ blah blah we actually like <laughs> You know, go through a lot more things than you think to get to the point where you are in draft or in, in the game. So I realized that things I've read it for like a, a goal player criticizes a pro player doesn't make sense. Sure, like sometimes obvious mistakes are obvious mistakes. Yeah, I know. sure. You suicide for no reason, you die in game, and it's like, oh, that was stupid. Yeah, I agree. But it's how you got there in the first place that people don't understand. Why are you fighting Harold? Yeah, good question. Because if we don't, we've been here so many times where this team makes fun of us in mid game because they have heralds, so we have to match them or they take our whole tower, blah, blah, blah. Right? We've been through this whole game so many times, so we know what it looks like. So we thought this was our best place to make a last stand or whatever, right? Like, if people had just you know watched one scrim block of a Western team against an Eastern team in like previous couple of years, they would understand why you do the things you do. So it's bit of rant here that wasn't that organized but good. i guess what i'm saying is i think a lot of people on social media are very negative it's always like why this they lost this yeah, draft yeah. bad player bad but they don't really know all the, the scrim games all the draft meetings all the practice that you know together made you get here in the first place that got you here in the first place yes that's why you do the things you do because you know the other outcomes are even worse than this one Yes. So it's... I know what you mean. Like Here's the thing. I always yeah. tell people, I, I, this is what I've been actually trying to do this on my shows now. Even though, listen, on Twitter, I definitely do it because I just shit post on Twitter. That's why I do, mate. But then again, I, sure? I do not pretend to be an expert about league. I'm a fucking interviewer, a journalist, and I'm just very opinionated. Don't worry about it. I'd do the same if I was in a pub chatting about football. No, fuck all about football. <laughs> but here's what I'll say. I always do say, when it comes to draft, though, I try not to go hard because I always say this. Bro, I know too yeah. many coaches. They're not fucking idiots. They're not first time and shit on stage. Yeah. Like, if they're not picking the strong pick, that means, guess what? They ran that into a brick wall against like fucking JDG and scrims. And they were like, "That we can't yeah. even get through lane on that. And then when they're picking, yeah. like, why are they picking that bad thing? Because that was the one thing that worked for that like position player. That's the only way you could get into a game. And there was a, there was even a vision of how you could play it. Like, essentially, the coaches are doing the draft right. Now, listen, you could criticize whether the player can play the shit. There might be a, an angle there. But like, the coaches actually are weird. They, they get the most shit of everyone, man. Yeah, like, half yeah. the time, most of their drafts, if you ever talk to them, make a lot of sense. Yeah. I remember we beat Golden Guardians, this MSI. We played this Vars Heimerian comp. We got really far ahead. We didn't play Elite very well, but we won the game. Then I remember in the bus ride home, I opened Twitter and I see Ellis makes a tweet about how he would, he's like mocking our comp and saying he would love to see us play against Gen G and get less gold lead or whatever. I can already see basically where the story's our, our going. Comp, Come on. Our comp, our comp is shit, basically what he's saying, yes. and we wouldn't play against Gen G with it. But like, it's so like, annoying to see that kind of comment from anyone whether it was him or someone else doesn't matter because we picked it because we thought it was the best pick in that game and if you pick standard against the korea and you lose people flame for being not innovative yes you pick innovative and you get shit on for picking against golden gardens like what do you want from us you know what can we do at this point to, to please you besides the win <laughs> we'd pick picks the best always not because of our opponents like being Korean or being fucking from America, right? doesn't matter. It's just, I don't know. It's so disheartening in a way 
these kind of comments. That's why I tend to stay off media as much as I can. Even sometimes I just open Twitter after I win, be like, hey, what's up, guys? We won. Nice. You know? You see that and you're like, what the fuck? What can I do at that point to win? Do you want to play standard against Genji, like we did, and lose? Or play something funny, maybe win early game, have a banger, and then lose? Like, what's. It doesn't fucking matter, you know? You can't please everyone. So I stopped trying that a long time ago, and it made me have a lot more peace mentally. I know that streaming is good for your career. I know that tweeting all the time, funny things, it's good for your career and your brand, it can give you more money and stuff. But like, I never cared. I, I care about the money and my salary only the days I negotiate my contract. I don't think about it right now. And I know that like, sounds like a spoiled luxury thing to have to be able to say, but it never mattered to me how much I got paid. I just want to win. I want to create a legacy I can look back at and be like, I'm proud of these years I was a pro. The money is a very nice side factor, but I would play esports for less money than I'm, I am, you know? Not saying I can get scammed by my, mo- yeah, my yeah. own Jack. It, sure. it Jack. Don't get any ideas, you know? That's just how it is. Like in, in G2, we took pay cuts to make our team happen, to, to buy ourselves out from from Origin, right? Like we we couldn't make it happen. So we had to perks, I and and um, what's it called, Mitty, took a, a month for salaries to go into our buyouts. Perks, once again, doing something, like doing whatever it took to make the best team he could get happen, right? That's why he's the Western GOAT in my eyes, because he would do that kind of thing. And it's not unprecedented to take a pay cut to play the best team or like yeah, not yeah. care about the money more than anything else, right? So, yeah, I guess that's uh, just my mindset throughout the years. But here's the thing, we're almost at the end of the interview, but I do have one more serious question, but it's a weird one you'll have never heard, which yeah, is, I actually think one of the reasons why people have like a weird perception of you as well is because when you talk, it sounds like you're thinking four times faster than you can talk, and it's oh, like yeah. your mouth is struggling to keep up with the words. It almost sounds like you're a speech impediment, uh, even though you're totally, you're totally fluent, you can understand everything you're saying, but it seems like you've got a million thoughts going through your mind. That's is, an issue is that what it is? I've always had. Okay. From... From like people thinking I'm aggressive because you know I'm 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 tall I'm big I have an accent I look how I look people thought I was being aggressive because I speak fast with an accent and all that and then they told me like oh yeah I thought you were being aggressive and I was like oh really I wasn't trying to be or like from stuttering to having a hard time pronouncing pronouncing some words it's always been an issue for me the the speaking thing I want to say a lot of things very quickly but I can't always do it. It's something that I, I always hated about myself in a way. Uh, that's why I admire like casters and stuff. Oh, right. Well, like, they can just you know, they can I, never trip over. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yesterday I watched the uh, MSI Finals highlights, right? And the highlights, you only hear like the play play casters like Medic and Flowers or Dracos. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to, to like Flowers and Dracos say like 500 words in one minute perfectly. It's like an actual skill to have, right? For sure. Something I admire. And I wish I could do the same because. Often people have thought I was being passive aggressive, even though I absolutely hate passive aggressiveness, and I would never do it. I would just be aggressive if I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but people thought I was being that because of the way I sound or the way I speak or my my uh, what do you call it? like not posture, but like my body language. And I always hated that. But I never try to be aggressive towards people. I remember in the past, someone makes a comment in the game that's passive aggressive. I would just pause, and be like, "Yo, what the fuck, man!" Right. And in C9, we didn't always have a culture where we could just do that to me. So people often thought something negative of me, but didn't say it. But then once we talked about it, we cleared it up and we were like, oh, you weren't actually trying to be aggressive. You just sound like it because of your body language, your accent, your whatever, right? Yes. So that's something that now, like people like Fudge, people like Mitty, people like Blabber understand that I'm not trying to be aggressive or I just sound like it. And sometimes I sound like I'm arrogant or like confident, but I, I am confident. Maybe I'm arrogant too, but I'm not trying to come off as it. It just, I don't know. You can't really like hide your your voice and your language and your body language. It's just not in me to, to like hold back that much, I suppose. I mean, this leads so. into another thing though, which is obviously, I mean, you most of the time I ask this at the end, which is 
even though I know part of it's like some NA fans hate on EU players and they hate on people that they think in or they still hate on you from fucking the past or like you say you get to MSI but then they're just like well you're not as good as Kerry it's like well yeah no shit like get out you can't ever be better but the obvious thing that everyone got upset at this year was when you dared to not fucking shake that guy's hand after that game when he got trashed off <laughs> you like bro here's the thing I actually like that you still own up that even though you lost that finally you like doing the thing to Jensen and that you believe in a bit of trash like I think it's good to have those characters like yeah, what would you say to that because people got really upset at that bro they were like this is really unacceptable like you know it hurt his feelings like who gives a yeah, shit <laughs> I thought that was fucking funny too the, 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 the yawn thing like yes so the way it went, it went down so there's been a lot of wrong version of the story but we're in the game they win a team fight at the dragon they win the early game the whole game as well so they're ahead pretty far by, at this point right actually that's not true let's go back first so in mid I gank this guy Harry and he fucks up his combo and I see her really hard like it was really cringe how bad it was so I think Diplex XDs him in all chat after he dies the Harry guy and Harry like XDs him back okay classic like melee interaction right no, no, nothing big there this is my face and move on then boss been losing the whole game we've been getting dope by Piosic the goat on Elise and finally the dragon fight happens we lose the dragon fight they like kind of like low key ace us and the game is now in a really bad position bad spot for us right and then the guy types you are worse than our academy team like worse than teal academy that's what he said because teal always screams against our academy team on their match days which oh, everyone right. knows so be so calling us worse than teal academy is first of all cringe but it's fine if you do it before the game starts or like as a banter but in eu there was always this like common so the unwritten rule is you don't talk shit after you win you talk shit before the game and after the game if it's like sometimes in good nature right but you don't touch it like as you're winning or like after you win you don't you you stay humble or, or graceful or whatever okay so i got fired up i was like okay fuck this kid you know fuck this guy so we win the game and the funny part is that he actually griefed it so karma hit him hard like me in 2019 finals i suppose karma always hits you hard when you talk shit before the games i mean during the games when you're winning so i was like fuck this guy i'm gonna not shake his hand that was disgusting behavior, you know? So I was like, fuck it. I told him, like, yeah, well played, bro. After, you know, when I walked past him, like, yeah, fuck you, kind of thing. I didn't think much of it. I was just fired up in a moment. And I was like, ah, whatever. I don't regret any of it at all. I don't... I didn't think about it much at all. But then when I opened Twitter and I heard from, like, other people, it was a really big deal. And, like, I remember that I tweeted about it and it was getting millions of, like, interactions from people and, like, so many comments, like, saying, ah, that's so... On sports, it's like from you, I'm like, bro, have you ever watched actual sports in your life? <laughs> like, there's a lot of more unsportsman like things oh, happening Lord, in actual yeah. sports. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like nothing compared to that. And I mean, realize how sensitive esports fans really are and how sure. out of touch they are in that sense sometimes. Not all fans are. Like, I will say the people I've met in esports, the fans have been so fucking nice from. You know, G2 or yeah, yeah. Oh, the Times difference between nine. real life fans and Twitter is mentally, yeah, it. <laughs> it's, it's not even the same, yeah. yeah. Just people on Twitter are so out of touch with like how things yes. actually are, but yeah, I actually like don't regret you know those moments at all, like having fun with Jensen, you know, fucking around with uh, what's it called, the Yanni guy, or like just all the shit we said back in 2017, 16, 15, like we were bantering back then, like banter was a really big part of like the LAC back in those days, you know, talking shit about your opponents in like funny ways to people actually having rivalries or like heated, like hate, like the upset uh, Attila situation. Yes. That was real, right? They hate yeah, each other. Yeah. And those kind of things are good for the league. Sure. I kind of regret that I stopped doing that in 2018, 19 when I was losing and there was too much negativity uh, on my, my my social media. I kind of just like stop tweeting and stop making jokes and stop being like me in a way because I was doing so badly in those years. And then when I lost in say nine twenty twenty, I couldn't do it either because now it's no sneaky no worlds, <laughs> and I was just hiding in one way. But then when I started playing support, I enjoyed the game in a new way, and I found that crash talking energy back with the whole support king and all chat when I was doing a good play or like when anything happened, you know, just I couldn't engage. Didn't matter if it went or not, I was just type support king. And it would just get into people's heads. And I got reminded kind of of the good old days in G2 when 
people would like visibly play differently or like yeah you could tell people were triggered you know that kind of thing so i don't know it's like i got reignited in a way from the whole support thing obviously this was an epic interview at the end of this interview do you have a final message or do you want to thank Cosello 21 i realized this year when i went to london and someone asked me if i went to london before i said yeah i was here holy fuck that was 2015 that was eight years ago that I had a really, really long career and I'm not going anywhere, I hope, at least. I still think I can improve so much more in support and I'm so happy to play. I'm having so much fun playing the game still and I'm loving every part of it. So I want to thank all the people that have been part of it for this many years. You know, some guy in London came up to me and said, I've been a fan since OG Mythians, man, you know, and came up with a jersey and like, want me to sign it? I'm like, hell yeah, bro. You know, some people have been along for the ride for a long time and I, I, appreciate, those, I appreciate those people. So, thank you. I hope I'm not going anywhere soon. And uh, even in this interview, there's so much more things I could say. I could keep talking about my career and esports and league for so long. I just fucking love this game and this. I'm so grateful to be have been able to, you know, take this path in my career. So thank you for listening. If you've been here the whole time, <laughs> manga tak, manga tak. Where I come from in England, people will often say, oh yeah, you and whose army? Well, I'll tell you what, I've got my own army backing me up. They're called the Skrilluminati. Thank you to Ahmed Haju, Joseph Adcock, Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Theogeny, Animosity, Bot Pounder 420, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gordy, Tosh, Tukan, and as always, you know it, a special thanks goes out to my boy Jerky's Minion. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Do you want teasers? Find out who's in the upcoming interviews. Do you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA? Maybe you want to be part of those long discussions where we talk about anything and everything in esports. Well, if so, put your money where your mouth is and enlist today in the Skrilluminati via the Patreon link in the box below.